the Oscar Guest Collection, Salvaged Works by Jewish Artists in Paris, introduces 18 promising artists who made their way to Paris in the beginning of the 20th century, only to be persecuted and deported back to the East during the Holocaust. This exhibition brings their lives, their life stories, and their work back into focus for the first time. We wanted it to represent the before and after, or arrivals and departures. So behind me we can see one of the prime examples of that. On the one hand you see a nude, a very new genre for these artists, who before they came to Paris the nude was a very revolutionary thing, not at all accepted. They came to Paris, to Bohemian Paris, and suddenly it was a very popular genre. During the war he fled to his sister in Zurich, and he started making paintings of refugees and families who were in pain or suffering. So you can really see the twofold, the before the war and after the war. These two oil paintings were done in an internment camp in France, in the occupied zone, and both represent the beautiful landscape around this camp. It is remarkable that they were actually done with oil paint in this camp. That was only possible because there was a strong network, a strong artistic network in Compiègne that from Jewish artists that were deported from Paris in 1941 in the Belivere operation and that stuck together, organized exhibitions and celebrated life and art, despite everything, quand même, in Compiègne, as represented in this beautiful drawing by Jack Gottgo from 1941, signed by all these different Jewish artists from Paris. Here we have a map of how it all started, of the arrivals of the Jewish artists of École de Paris to Paris. And just above the map, we have a painting of a boat, the symbol of arrivals, depicted by one of our most innovative artists, Alexandre Fossini, who actually came to Paris on a boat called Rosemary. As a part of our research, we interviewed the grandnephew of Alexandro Fassini, and his grandnephew lives in Israel now. Uh, and he was very generous and provided us with some very rare archive photos of Alexandro Fassini, and one of them you can see right here on the wall. Jewish artists of École de Paris settled in Montparnasse and they were a really huge part of the cultural dynamics of the Roaring Twenties in France. And being the part of this huge cultural dynamics, they of course kept contact with very famous figures of the century. For example, here we have Pablo Picasso, depicted by his friend, one of our artists, Max Jacob. And what is interesting, Pablo Picasso also used to depict Max Jacob as well, because they were friends. Over the past two years, we've collected many documents, photos, and a lot of information about the 18 artists that we felt that there is so much more to say. And we decided to create this open archive, which is a work in progress. Um, Natalie Kremer, for example, was my artist that I decided to research. And two years ago, we knew almost nothing about her. And through uh, many diggings uh, in European archives, uh, I managed to find her transport page to Auschwitz. Uh, and even the receipt with the amount of money that she paid for her train ticket um, to Auschwitz, and also her liter literature book, uh, and many more uh, information about her. I feel that through this wonderful project, after 70 years, we were able to bring back these artists, their names, their faces, and the respect they deserve. We decided to structure the exhibition according to the history of the École de Paris, the general history of persecution of Jewish artists in France. That brought us into a very difficult decision because it was mm, hard to include the biographies of the individual artists. That's when we came up with the idea to give the visitors postcards. Thus we produced one individual postcard for each artist, including a work of his on the front and a little portrait of each of them on the back side and a small biography which you can take with you while traveling through the exhibition um, and check up 
where he was in which year the work was done. What I hope people come away from this exhibition with is not only a sense of what was lost, but also what has been found through the efforts of Oscar Gez and his son Claude Gez to collect these works, and also through this project at the University of Haifa and by the graduate students in the Department of Holocaust Studies who have tried to fill in as many gaps as possible and to bring these artists' stories and their works back to life. This exhibition is a testament to the multidisciplinary nature of the program. The students who created this exhibition, well, they came from a variety of disciplines and they brought skills from a variety of different fields to bring to life, to revive, to resuscitate the lives of people who died in the Holocaust and uh, present them in a manner which is so emotional and so reflective of these people's lives that it brings tears to people's eyes when they come through this place. Mm -hmm.